Okay, so let's do this problem. This is the Atwoods machine. Uh, so I have a mass M1 right here, mass M2 right there, and this is a massless pulley for right now. You can redo the problem with a pulley with mass, but I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so the first thing we want to think about is uh, how, many gen how many degrees of freedom do we have right here? Um, you know, you could think of this being able to move in three dimensions and this being able to move in three dimensions, so there's six. But we also have constraints. Constraint number one, no motion in the z direction for either of those two. Uh, and then we have the constraint that neither one can move this way either. So now we only have two degrees of freedom. This one can move up and down, and that one can move up and down. And so I could call this one y1 and y2. Okay, those are the position. But there's still another constraint. If this one moves up, that one has to move down. So I could write the equation of constraint as this. y1 plus y2 equals some constant. And so with that, I could, I could get down to one degree of freedom. Okay, so I could just use one coordinate. I'm going to use this y1. I'll just call it y to describe the whole situation. If I know that value, I can tell you where it is. Now, what we want is to get the Lagrangian. So remember, L equals T minus U. So I need to find the kinetic energy. Let's do that one first. So let's get, let's say that that one has mass M1, M2. So I could say T equals 1 half M1 Y1 dot squared. So that's the velocity is Y1 dot and they have to square it to get the kinetic energy, plus one-half m2 y2 dot squared. But again, that has this has the coordinates y1 and y2. I don't want that. But I'm doing it this way, so you can see how we go from a more than one generalized coordinate to reduce it to only what we need. And we sometimes we need to write the kinetic energy in terms of real coordinates. Um, it's just easier that way. So that is the kinetic energy. But I don't want to write it that way. So if I come up here and I say y2 equals c minus y1. Now I can find the velocity of y2 by taking the derivative of this with respect to time. And then I'd have to do the same thing to this side. So I get y2 dot equals the derivative of c with respect to time. It's a constant, so it's zero. And then I get negative y1 dot. So now I can rewrite my kinetic energy as equal to 1 half m1 y1 dot squared plus 1 half m2 y1 dot squared. Because yes, that's negative, but when I square it, it doesn't really matter. So really, the kinetic energy is equal to, I'll write it up here. Oh, that might be too high. Let's write it right there. T equals 1 half m1 plus m2 y1 dot squared. Okay, and let's think about it. These things are tied together. So whatever the speed of this one has to be, it had to be that one too. And so they're really they're moving together. So the kinetic energy, I can think of it as the total mass times the velocity squared. And that's exactly what I have right there. Okay, so that's the kinetic energy. Now we need the potential. Okay, so let me erase this. Okay, so now for the potential, I can say this is y equals zero. So uh, the potential is going to be the potential of that one plus that one. So u equals m1 g y1 plus m2 g y2. But again, I have two variables and I don't want that. I want one. So I can use this y2 equals c minus y1 and I get u m1 g y1 plus m2 g c minus y1. And so now I have the potential in terms of just that one variable. So I have the kinetic energy in terms of 
y dot and the potential in terms of y. So I can, and I'm going to drop the one now, okay, because I will forget it otherwise. So I'm going to write L, let's say I'll write it up here, L equals one half m1 plus m2 y dot squared minus m1 g y minus m2 g c minus y. And that's my Lagrangian. Now, using the Euler-Lagrange equation, I can find the equation motion because this has to be true. The partial of L with respect to Y uh, minus the derivative with respect to time of the partial with respect to Y dot equals zero. That's the Lagrangian equation. So let's do this first. The partial of L with respect to Y. Okay, there's no Y right there. Here I get negative m1g, and here I get uh, negative, that's going to give me a constant that goes away, and I'm going to get a positive m2g, right, because I have a negative times that, it goes away, negative times a negative gives me a positive, and then I take the derivative and I just get m2g. So that's that piece, let's do this one, the partial of L with respect to y dot uh, there's no y dots over here, I only have that. So I'm going to get a 2 and then uh, just y dot. So I get, because m doesn't have a y dot in it, so I get m1 plus m2 times y dot. Now I can take the derivative with respect to time of this, and so that's a constant, so it doesn't really matter. So I just get the derivative of y dot with respect to time. So I get d dt partial of L with respect to y dot is going to be m1 plus m2 y double dot. So now I have this minus that equals zero. So I have, I'll write this as g times m2 minus m1, that's the same thing, minus uh, m1 plus m2 y double dot equals zero. So I could add that to both sides. m1 plus m2 y double dot equals g m2 minus m1 so y double dot g m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2. I feel like I made a mistake, but let's just check. I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling mistake, but let's go on. Let's just see what what would happen if the mass one was zero. If mass 1 was 0, then this should accelerate down uh, at, with, with g. So if m1 is 0, I get 0, 0, I get m2 over m2, and I do get g. That's good. Okay. What if m1 is equal to m2? In that case, it should be an equilibrium, and I should, it should be a 0 acceleration. So if m1 equals m2, I get 0 on the top. So that's good, too. Okay, so I think it's okay. Um, so this is my acceleration. I could integrate twice to get the position, but I don't think that's useful at this point. Clearly, you get the acceleration to some constant value, which is, if you do this problem with the classical mechanical way, Newtonian physics, saying, oh, there's tension up, there's M2G down, and that one has tension up, and they have the same acceleration, hopefully you did this problem as an undergraduate physics, in your intro physics course, and you should get the same thing. And so in this case, maybe this isn't the best way to do it, but it's good to do problems that you can do both ways. Because what's cool here is that there are no forces. I didn't use forces, okay? I don't have to write the tension, which I don't know anyway. I don't care. I don't need it. Just one degree of freedom, so I get one Lagrangian equation. That's it.